Hey there, welcome to the brand new version of Hatchbox. I'm excited to walk you through how to use it to deploy your Rails applications. So let me log into my account here and the first things we're gonna do is go create a new cluster. A cluster in Hatchbox is a set of servers that have different responsibilities and all work together to deploy your Rails apps. So for example, you might want a load balance server or cluster and you would create a load balancer and two web servers and maybe a separate database server and maybe even a background worker server. The cluster is going to give all of those servers different roles and coordinate between them and add them and remove them from the load balancer and so on as you make adjustments. So when you create a cluster, you're gonna connect it to your hosting provider. I chose DigitalOcean. Um, you will go and choose which organization or team you want it on. And then you choose your region and you will click continue. And then you'll add your first server. So we'll go down here and we'll say, let's create a one gig server. We're gonna have it run the web server, cron, background workers, and a Postgres server internally. You can also add um, the managed databases as well, but those you will add later on. This is for simply choosing what responsibilities this server has inside of the cluster. Now, if you want a separate um, one for staging and a separate one for production, you would create two separate clusters so that your application gets deployed to those uh, separately. If you deploy two apps to the same cluster, they're going to be deployed to all of the servers in that cluster. So clusters are the organization method for the servers and the applications. So what will happen here is this will um, create the server. It will wait for the droplet um, to become active. So it takes like a minute to spin up and it's just going to uh, keep an eye on it until it's ready to go. And once it is, it's gonna start provisioning. So what we'll see here is it will um, be completed, it will be created, and then you will see the pr uh, provision start. And this is going to install all of the packages and dependencies, configure the deploy user and all of that for you. Um, anytime in here, you can click test connection and it will try to SSH into the server and verify that it has access. This has failed right now because the provision hasn't actually finished. Yet it's going to try to log in, I believe is the deploy user, which is what we normally use. Um, but you can always look at this and see, oh, it used the root user actually. So this is still configuring our SSH keys and stuff on the server and things. And now you'll see that the test connection succeeds because the provision has started and everything. We will automatically create these servers with Ubuntu 22.04 right now. When the next LTS version of Ubuntu Linux comes out, we will upgrade to that and support that as well. Um, and that will just make sure that you have the latest version of everything. So uh, I previously have a server or cluster set up. So we have um, an existing server we can use without having to wait. So to create an application and deploy it, we're going to go define our uh, repository on GitHub, which we connect GitHub. You can hit this button and it will go and allow you to connect GitLab, GitHub, Bitbucket, um, and you can also do custom and then just specify your repository directly there. And we are going to use the master branch here because I haven't updated that repository yet. We will save our changes and then Hatchbox will uh, give us some little to-dos here. We can add the Rails master key to whatever value if you need it. You can save this. It will go ahead and copy those environment variables over to the server and make sure that they are available. You can also create databases here. So we're gonna create an unmanaged database. This is one that's run on our server. And then that will give us a Postgres instance that we can use. You can also create managed databases here and it will take you over to the databases tab. And this allows you to create database clusters on um, you know, other hosts like EC2 and so on. So if we go under apps again, uh, we'll go back to our app and we can go to the dashboard. We can also add a domain um, and this will automatically set up SSL with Let's Encrypt using the Caddy web server. So what's cool about this is if we add example.com and we make sure that our DNS points to the server, this is going to update Caddy um, and tell Caddy, hey, you respond to this with this Rails app and um, it will automatically enable SSL whenever the first request comes in. So uh, we don't have to define any processes ourselves, 
because the initial deploy of your Rails app will detect any processes at the end and um, set them up automatically for you. So the logs down here show the deployment process. The app log um, that you see here is the overarching deployment of the app. So this is going to deploy to all of your servers and coordinate between them. And you will see those specific app logs down here under server logs um, or server logs will be down there. And on each server, you'll see the commands that are being run. So it's cloning the repository. It's going to then detect the Ruby version. It's gonna make sure you have um, the latest bundler installed. It will install Node.js as well. Um, we have pre-compiled all of the Ruby versions, so they will be installed very quickly for you instead of having to wait 10 minutes to have them compile. And we've also done compatibility so that Ubuntu 22.04, which only ships with OpenSSL 3, now uh, that means that you can really only compile the latest Ruby 3.1 on here natively, and you have to actually go compile OpenSSL versions that are older to support Ruby 3.0 and previous. So we've done all of that for you. You don't have to worry about it. Everything is taken care of for you. We've also switched from using RBM in our old version, Hatchbox Classic, over to using ASDF, which means that you can add a tool versions file to your repository, and we'll be able to detect um, that and install those dependencies. So if you have a specific version of Node.js you want to run, we can do that for you as well. So this process is going to install all of our dependencies. Um, and once it's done installing all of those with Bundler and using the asset precompile command to do your yarn install, install and compile, um, those will be done and then we will set up and detect your processes. So we will be able to see that, oh, you have a Rails app, we have Puma installed, so we will add a process for running Puma. And if you don't use Puma and you use like Unicorn or something, we will just automatically run the Rails server for you. And that will be as easy as it is. Is. So here we're running the Rails migrations, which happen automatically because we've tagged the server with the cron um, status. And so that um, means that this server, specifically out of all of the servers in your cluster, will run the migration. So they only run a single time. Once everything has been compiled and deployed, we'll then start or restart the server process for you and your deploy will be complete. So we keep track of all of that stuff. We run all of these with systemd so that your processes like your Rails app will not fail. Um, or if they crash, they'll be rebooted and uh, all of that will be taken care of for you. So this is super cool. We automatically set up a subdomain for you and we've partnered with Let's Encrypt to automatically allow HTTPS um, for these domains. Uh, the subdomains and we have you know unlimited subdomains that we can add to there um, for you so this is super nice for us to give you a way to access your apps because if you have a cluster with multiple apps on it you need to actually use a domain to access each one if you just use the ip address caddy's not going to know which server to actually render or which application to render when you make that request so the domains are important that's why we generate one here for you we had ssl for it so it's a lot more seamless and you are all good to go out of the box. So what I would do now is I would come into processes, might need to add Sidekick in here or customize this in some way. Um, you can click on the server, it will show you the logs and it will print out all of that information here. So here we have like a um, begin restart for nil, error message there from Puma and then it restarted uh, it looks like it restarted a couple times and then it worked now. Um, so that is all functional. You can take a look at the logs here. We have some instructions. If you want to SSH into the server, you can do that as well. In order to SSH into your cluster, you'll want to go to your um, SSH keys tab, add your public key, and then that will add it to all of the existing servers so that you can access all of them. We recommend SSHing in as the deploy user to your server because that's where all of your application code runs. We'll email you the root password so you can run sudo on the deploy user and become root uh, for any commands. That password is emailed to you. We don't keep track of it. It is only sent out once. 
You can always reset it inside of the servers and cluster um, settings, but uh, that is server password kept secure for you. Then under activity, you can see all of the things that have run for the uh, Hatchbox commands that have updated the server or done anything like changing environment variables and so on. Um, you can also enable automatic deploys. This will set up a GitHub webhook or a GitLab webhook or whatever. You can also set up your own webhooks directly here and you can put them into your CI uh, like so, so that you can deploy a specific commit and then wait until it's finished and that all works nicely. Um, your environment has your environment variables. The databases has that. You can also set up cron jobs here um, so that those can run at whatever schedule you would like. Then if we go back to settings, you can rename your application. There's a maintenance mode and you can also delete your app as well. Now under databases, if we go to one of these, we can click on this and uh, let's find one with a database. So if we click on the database itself, we can attach it to different applications. We can see which applications it's attached to and which environment variable it's set to. You can detach them and then you can also configure backups. So you can say, let's uh, store backups uh, every day. We can store them local on the server or we can connect them to um, an S3 compatible uh, service. So that is that. And then under the script section, you can write your own scripts to do anything you would like. So this can be something like install FFmpeg and you can run as the root user. And we can then say apt install dash Y um, and say, you know, FFmpeg or whatever, compile it from source or anything that you might want to do. So you can create these scripts and once you've done that, you can click run. You can choose which servers you want to run them on, hit run, and it will go and trigger those um, to be run on all of your servers. So that is Hatchbox um, and a walkthrough of all of this. It's a lot, lot more flexible than our previous version, Hatchbox Classic. If you do have an account there and you wanna keep using that, just go to classic.hatchbox.io and you'll be able to use that. So that is the quick introduction to Hatchbox version two. We're really excited to have you use this. Um, we are going to be setting up the last little bits of this very soon. We're gonna be making some other improvements to allow clusters on like Azure and other hosts, maybe Hetzner, things like that. If you have any feedback on that, just hit feedback and support here. This is going to then send you uh, to the contact support. You send us an email, let us know what you're thinking and we'll happily get back to you as soon as we can. So that is it. I hope you enjoy it and uh, look forward to you trying out Hatchbox.